Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Reapiron, and today we're going to be going over another Deep Rock Galactic build. This is for the M1000 Classic for the Scout, the Battle Rifle. Uh, for this I will be using, once again, carl.gg forward slash build. A link in the description will be provided, that way you guys can go over there, check out this calculator, and um, so you can see what your damage is, your ammo is, um, clip capacity, what overclocks are available for your weapon and do some theory crafting if you would like to. So for this, uh, I'm going to be going over two different builds that I use fairly often with the M1000. I will not be going over overclocks at this point in time um, for kind of two reasons. One is that I haven't really got to try very many overclocks for the rifle. Um, and two is just that the overclocks can change the way that you build a rifle quite a bit, um, as well as any of the other weapons. So we're just going to be going through and these are going to be two builds. Um, usually I have a general purpose build and then other more specialized builds. With the M1000, I kind of just switch between these two builds because they both kind of feel like general purpose. Um, the first one is going to be a damage build. The second one is going to be more of a um, utility all around build. So in tier one, we have two options. We have expanded ammo bags. This makes it so you get 40 more ammo. So you go from 96 rounds to 136 rounds. Very good. That way you get more uh, ammo from resupplies and you'll have to resupply less often, which is always a good thing. Or you could go with increased caliber rounds. This gives you 10 more damage to your base damage. Um, in this, it says it's 20%, so I'm going to say that it's also 20%. Uh, I'm not sure if this is affected by overclocks and if this affects the focus shot. I believe so, but I'm not entirely sure. So with the first damage build, um, I would just say go with the increased caliber rounds, give the more damage, and uh, just use your focus shot more often. That's mostly what you're going to be doing with this first build. Uh, in tier two, we have two options here as well. We have fast charging coils. This makes it so we focus faster so you can do your charged up shot even quicker. We also have better weight balance. This makes it so we have less spread uh, per shot as well as less bloom and less recoil. So we're all around just more accurate with this. Um, both of these are actually really good with this build. I prefer going with the fast charging coils just because I usually use this as more of a focus shot build and focus shots are quite accurate um, compared to just spam firing the rifle. In tier three, we have once again, two options. For some reason, they like to give you only two options with this weapon. We have killer rounds. This makes it so that you get 25% uh, more multiplier on your focus shot. So you do even more damage with it. And we have extended clip. This makes it so we get six more rounds in our gun. So we go from holding eight rounds to 14 rounds. Um, effectively, this means that we go from having four charge shots up to uh, seven charge shots, which is also pretty nice. Both these are pretty good, too. I would say just go with the killer focus, though. That way you just get even more damage from your focus shots. And this build already will be doing tons of damage towards any sort of armored enemies, anything like Praetorians. Uh, if you can hit weak spots on like goo bombers, you can do tons of damage and just destroy them in just a few seconds. Uh, on tier four, we have super blow through rounds. This gives us three more penetrations, so you can punch through three enemies. That can be useful. Um, it can make focused rounds pretty strong in hordes, so long as you have kind of even level, so you can hit through multiple enemies effectively. Um, obviously, it won't be able to punch through things like ground or materials that are in your way. Uh, we have hollow point bullets. This makes it so we get 25% more damage to an enemy's weak spot. This weapon already has a 10% bonus to uh, enemy's weak spot. So this takes it from 10% to 35%. So we're doing more damage whenever we hit any uh, weak spots so the head, the belly of certain enemies, um, the thorax of other enemies, pretty much wherever it's glowing or wherever it looks kind of squishy. And then our last option here is Hardened Rounds. This makes it so we get 220% more armor breaking um, ability. We already have 30% base with this weapon, so it takes it up to 250%. This weapon can break through armor pretty easily on almost anything, uh, provided that you can break the armor. On unbreakable armor targets like um, Oppressors, you can't really do much more about that. But against Praetorians and uh, Guards and anything else, You'll be doing more damage. I would go with the hollow point rounds just to have that extra damage on weak points. Um, that's mostly where you're going to be wanting to focus your shots. And then in tier five, we have hitting where it hurts. This makes it so your focus shots will stun enemies that you hit for three seconds. Pretty good. Mm. We have precision terror, which this makes it so killing an enemy with a focus shot to a weak point will inflict fear to enemies within 3.5 meters and cause them to run away from the fear. This one's also pretty good. I like using this one too. Um, 3.5 meters is usually large enough that if you shoot something in the middle of a crowd, the crowd tends to disperse, which is kind of useful for you, especially if you're playing solo scout and you're using the rifle. 
um, because crowds can be kind of an issue if you're playing solo scout and using the rifle. And then our last uh, tier 5 option is killing machine. This makes it so manually reloading within one second after a kill reduces the reload by 0.75 seconds. So we get faster reloads after we kill something. This one can also be kind of useful. Um, I honestly don't notice the reload speed all that much and oftentimes forget to use it. Um, it can be useful if you shot out your last shot and then you just go to shoot again and have to reload and you manage to kill something with that last shot. But most of the time I don't really use this. Usually I go with either the stun or the precision tear. Whether I want to inflict fear or inflict stuns. Inflicting stuns is pretty good too because you can stun something like a Praetorian and get behind it easily or somebody else can get behind it very easily. Um, you should be able to get behind it quite easily as scout since you have your grappling hook. So shoot something like Praetorian in the face, jump around through the back of it and then, you know, shoot it in the back. This is the general sniper like build that I use a lot. Um, and I and I enjoy it quite a bit. It is a little bit ammo hungry. Um, I would definitely recommend taking the uh, Zukov pistols instead of the jerry rigged boomstick because the boomstick already doesn't have very much ammo unless you have certain overclocks to give you more boomstick ammo. Um, it can be kind of rough if you're going with the rifle and shotgun, especially if you're just going full damage build with each. You will need resupplies fairly often then because you won't have a whole lot of ammo. You will be extremely effective against killing any sort of large things, Praetorians, oppressors, anything like that you'll completely destroy. Um, it's just once there's hordes, you're going to run out of bullets quite quick. So the second build I use with Scout is more general purpose for everything. It can still work decently well against large enemies. It's not going to do as much damage as a sniper build, but you can still get by. And it does better against uh, crowds of enemies. I tend to take this if I also want to take the boomstick with the rifle and just kind of have a um, strong, hard hitting loadout. So first up, I go with expanded ammo bags just to give me that more ammo. I go with better weight balance. This way I just have less recoil because I'm likely going to just be spam firing this weapon rather than uh, taking the time to charge up shots. I definitely will uh, towards certain enemies and at certain distances, but not all the time, especially not against small enemies. Uh, I would go with extended clip, but you could go with um, the focus shot if you want to have more accurate long range shots. Uh, I like the larger clip just so I can spam fire the weapon a little bit more in tier four. I usually go with super blow through rounds or hollow point rounds, super blow through rounds because you can actually save quite a bit of ammo on crowds and just uh, be able to kill most small enemies very easily with this rifle. Or you could go with hollow point rounds to do even more damage to large enemies and to guarantee kills on smaller enemies, um, assuming you're hitting them in their weak spot. Uh, hardened rounds also wouldn't be bad here if you wanted to take that, but um, I don't think it's as necessary with scouts since you do have your grappling hook. You can you know, get around enemies and just keep hitting them in the weak spot or punch through multiple enemies with super blow through rounds. And then for uh, tier five, you can honestly go with any of these. Usually I go with the killing machine just to have the faster reloads. Um, but you could easily go with the fear or even with the um, hit them where it hurts. The stun, the stun works pretty well too against large enemies because you could stun something, get behind it and then just keep hitting it with either the focus shots or the spam fire. Um, spreading fear is kind of nice because it gives you a little bit of room to... Um, you know, breathe when enemies are coming down at you and killing machine just helps quite a bit when you're in the middle of fighting everything and you just need to reload pretty rapidly. So those are the two builds that I would recommend for the M1000 classic. Um, pretty straightforward builds. You could kind of do a hybrid build too, if you wanted to go for more damage and maybe armor penetration or something. And I don't think that would be a bad idea either, but these are the two that I would recommend. I haven't really played around with the other builds so much and I haven't played with this gun a whole ton because I haven't got access to most of the um, overclocks. I think I only have access to these two, um, which I've been liking, but it's not quite the same as having access to all of them because I feel like some of them can really make this gun uh, a lot more fun. So that'll do it for this video. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. And just to remind everybody, I do stream five days a week, every day, except for Monday and Thursday. Uh, try to catch me over on the streams. I stream to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch all at the same time. So you can catch me anywhere over there. And a lot of times we play games with open lobbies. So anybody can join if they would like to. Try to hop over there, try to get into a game or something. Uh, the streams will always be up too. So you can always go back and watch them if you guys want to as well. Thank you guys so very much for coming out here and watching this. I really do appreciate it, and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye.